In this video, I want to very briefly summarize some infinite series concepts and vocabulary, and then we're going to apply it to an example over here. So what's an infinite series? It's just a sum of infinitely many terms. In general, I could write it this way. The sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of some expression a n that depends on n. If I wrote it in expanded form, that would be a1 plus a2 plus a3, and so on and so on forever. So if I just sort of preview the example over here on the right, what I'm going to do is sub in n equals 1, sub in n equals 2, and I can make this, this list of fractions that are added up forever to the right. So what's the kth partial sum of an infinite series? That means the sum of the first k terms. So in summation notation, I could say sk is just the sum of the first k terms, and that's a finite sum. And this kind of gives us a handle on how we're supposed to deal with infinite sums. In expanded form, sk would look like this. I would add up a1, a2, and so on, all the way to the kth term. And the key to this is that the partial sums actually make their own sequence. And then we can talk about convergence of that sequence. So this is the whole plan for getting a handle on infinite sums. s1 is just the first term in the sum. s2 is the sum of the first two terms. So the sum is n goes from 1 to 2. So that's a1 plus a2. S3 is a1 plus a2 plus a3, and so on. And so this forms a sequence that I could call SK embraces. Now, when does this infinite series that we started with converge? If we examine the sequence of partial sums, we keep adding in one more term of the sum every time we write it down, and that actually settles down to some finite number, then it's sensible to call that the sum of the series and to say the series converged. So in limit notation, I could say this. Okay, if the limit of the sequence of partial sums equals some number s, then that s is what we call the sum of the series. Okay, let's apply some of these ideas to the example over on the right. And what I want to do in this example is write down the first several partial sums, and then we can start trying to detect a pattern and see whether or not this series converges. So we're going to try to look at the sequence of partial sums and take a limit. So S1, that's just the first term of the series. You sub in n equals 1, and I get 1 over 1 plus 2. That's 1 third. S2, that's the sum of the first two terms in the series. So I'm going to have... S1, the original first term, plus what I get when I sub in n equals 2, and that's 2 over 4. S3, that's the sum of the first three terms of the series. So I'm going to have 1 third plus 2 fourths, plus the n equals 3 term, and that's 3 over 5. S4, the first four terms of the series. So that's going to be 1 third plus 2 fourths, plus 3 fifths, plus 4 sixths. And we could go on forever with that. My goal is to detect some kind of pattern here. And in a sense, this is guided by intuition. I can tell this thing is not going to converge. We keep putting in numbers that are slightly bigger and slightly bigger and slightly bigger, and we're adding up more and more of these things. It's got to blow up to infinity. It's just a matter of figuring out how to prove it. So what I notice here is that every single one of these terms is bigger than one-third, except for the first one, which is actually equal to one-third. So here I have one of those terms. And I'll go ahead and just for completeness say, okay, that's greater than or equal to one-third. And in the second partial sum, I have two of those things that are bigger than one-third. So it's greater than or equal to two times one-third. In the third one, I have three terms that are bigger than one-third. In the fourth one, I have four terms that are bigger than one-third. And in the end, I've figured out that my kth partial sum is going to be greater than or equal to k times one-third. Well, then if I try to examine the limit as k goes to infinity of sk, that would be equal to the sum of the series. Um, that number is going to be bigger than or equal to limit as k goes to infinity of one-third k, 
which unambiguously goes to infinity. So we say the sum equals infinity, or I could say the sum diverges.